Besides the birth of your first child, is there anything more magical and satisfying than a perfectly coped molding joint? So I'm going to show you the easiest, cheapest way to get perfect cope joints on your baseboards. Then we'll talk about whether or not the cope joint on the inside corners is actually better than just mitering the baseboards together and which method is going to be best for you. And then I'll let you know which method I end up using over 90% of the time. I think the answer is going to surprise you. Before we get into the cutting of the cope joint, it's important to understand the layout of how the pieces go together. That's a critical part and if you mess it up, it's gonna be a lot harder and slower. So what you wanna do here is for baseboards in a given room, you wanna start at the doorway. And if you're right-handed, I like to work counterclockwise. It just makes sense in terms of stud finder, nail gun, pushing the baseboard in with your left hand. And what that ends up doing here is you start off with a square, square piece, and then all of your cope joints are gonna be on the right side of the baseboard and then all the other left-hand sides are gonna be square. That does a couple things. It just makes it easier in that you can push the cope into the baseboard and then slide the square edge into the wall. And it eliminates the need to have like a cope on both sides of the piece that you have to fit in between two baseboards. What can happen there is the coped edge is prone to chipping. So you don't really wanna be pushing it in like this. It's always nicer to set it in there and then push the square edge in. As you're measuring these pieces, you'll need a little scrap piece of baseboard. Just slide that in there and that will give you the measurement to the square end and where the cope butts in. So you just go like that all the way around. The first step here for your cope joint is to cut a 45 on the right hand side if you're working counterclockwise. So I'm gonna cut that with a miter saw. Now, if you're just starting off with cope joints um, it is easy to make a mistake when you're back cutting this. So you might want to leave your cut like an inch long, give yourself a little bit of room, get the cope joint looking nice, test fit it, and then cut it to length. So we've got that cut on the 45. What that does is it just reveals the profile exactly where you need to back cut that to get the perfect fitting joint. Now there's a couple little cheats that you can do here. You can just start working on this with the coping saw straight away. And if you have a long baseboard and you don't have a nice table, I don't really recommend doing what I'm about to do here. But if you do and you're pretty comfortable with the miter saw, there's a couple little cheats that you can do. You can go ahead and cut this straight flat part here on the miter, on the miter saw. So I'm gonna cut that back at 30 degrees, which is gonna leave a nice little back cut so the piece can fit tight. You can do 45 degrees, but I find it makes the edge a little sharper and more prone to chipping. So I like to do like 30, 35 degrees. Usually I do 35. And then you can also, right where this curve ends at the very top, so the curve ends right there. From that point on, you can cut a nice little square cut on the miter saw there. And that's just gonna give a little cleaner of an edge than what you could do with a coping saw. So I'll make those cuts. So when it comes to actually making the cut, you're gonna need something to do that. You can use a coping saw, an angle grinder, or a Collins foot for your jigsaw. The easiest one's gonna be the coping saw. The other two, there's a bit more of a learning curve and it's a lot easier to mess things up. They definitely have their advantages, but this is gonna be the cheapest, easiest way. You can get this saw here. This is the Baco 301. It's kind of an industry standard for coping saws. Very nice handle on this thing. That's what I like about it. I think it's $25 Canadian. I'll put a link in the description. Then you're gonna need some kind of a sandpaper. You can, you can get different types of wood files as well, but you can get by with just a sheet of sandpaper, 150 grit. So to the cutting, take your saw. Now it's nice to be cutting. You can switch these blades around to be cutting on the down stroke. That way it's gonna be less likely to chip the face of the board. And you wanna just follow along at that same type of 35 degree angle, giving yourself a little bit of a back cut. It's gonna be easier to fit the, the joint together that way. And then when you get to the end here, you wanna be careful that you don't cut that back cut all the way through the top edge. You wanna leave this um, part here square so that it's gonna butt in nicely. 
So yeah, you can see I cut pretty dang close there actually. There's not gonna be a lot of sanding. You can just take a little piece and roll up a curve. I got like a little small curve piece here and then this here can do kind of both curves. So just take that and then rather than stick at the 35, you just flatten it out a little bit and then you're just sanding. You don't wanna go straight up and down, but just flatten it out a bit. It's gonna make it sand a little quicker. Let's check that with a scrap piece. So is the cope joint actually that much better than just mitering the inside corners on your baseboards? It's actually considerably better because you end up avoiding a lot of the inherent problems that you have with an inside miter. If one piece is slightly too short, it's going to be open like that. One piece is slightly too long, it'll be open the other way. It could be open on the top could be open on the bottom edge. And then as well, if the wall is more than 90 degrees, it's gonna be open along the entire face. So you end up avoiding a lot of those problems with the cope joint. That being said, in my career, over 90% of the time, I've just mitered the inside corners. That's the way that I was taught when I was young, and it is slightly faster. But if I had to go back in time, I think that I would just stick with the cope joint. It's hard to ignore the difference in quality. So I highly recommend on your next baseboard job, try two or three of the joints, see how you like it. And hey, if you're in the market for a new miter saw, check out this video right over here. You might not need to spend as much money as you think. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you on the next video.